Good morning, church. My name is Blair Sunhausen. I'm the director here at Liberty United Methodist Church, and I'm so excited to be with you in worship. We exist to be a Christian community where people encounter Jesus and where lives are changed, and I hope that happens for all of us here today. We're so glad you joined us for worship, whether this is your first time or you've been worshiping with us for years. Either way, please be sure to sign in with us. If you're joining us on Sunday morning, you can click the connection card tab above, or you can go to our website and find the guest connection tab there. Now let's turn our hearts to worship. Hear these words calling us to worship. For the beauty of the summer day and the comfort of friends nearby, for the invitation to love and be loved, for our God who extends that call, for time set apart to nourish the world, for time to go out into the world armed with love, for all these things we give thanks. Let us worship God. message today. Have you ever heard that we should treat other people the way we want to be treated? That's called the golden rule, right? Did you know that that comes from the Bible? Today, Pastor Ginger is going to teach us about a passage from the Bible that says, you should love your neighbor as yourself. And that basically just means that we should love other people the way we want to be loved. And remember, can you remember when the Bible talks about our neighbors, do they just mean the people who live next door to us or down the street? No, right? When God talks about loving our neighbors, God means everybody, every person we meet. But wow, how do we show love to everybody we meet? Are we just supposed to walk up to people on the street and say, hey, I love you? That'd be kind of weird, right? No, I think what the Bible wants us to do is to show love to people. And we can show love in a million small ways. We can smile or wave when someone walks past us. We can help somebody who's fallen down on the playground. We can invite a friend to sit with us at lunch. We can even bake cookies or give a call to someone we know who's lonely, right? There are so many ways we can show love. So today I want to ask you guys, can you try to think of one way you can show love to somebody in your life? 
Maybe you might want to clean your room today to show your parents that you love them. Or call your grandparents or send them a card to tell them how much you love them. There are so many ways we can show love. So I want you guys to think of one and then let me know what you chose. Let's pray together. Dear God, thank you for giving us so many different ways we can say I love you to the people around us. Help us to go out and be good neighbors to everyone by loving them just like we would like to be loved. In your name we pray, amen. There are many people in our church, in our, in our family, and community who are experiencing difficulties in body, mind, and spirit. Today we lift up specifically Val Dennis, Jim Lundy, Bob Tinsley, and Vicki Creason and her family and her recent passing of her mother. Jesus loves me still today, walking with me on my way, wanting as a friend to give light and love to all who live. Yes, Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Good morning, church. Will you pray with me? Healing God of heaven, heal the broken places in our bodies, our minds, our spirits, and our relationships. We ask that you would send your healing touch to Jim Yetter, Val Dennis, and Bob Tinsley. We pray, God, that you would bless those who care for them as well. Heal the broken places in our democracy and our economy in our sickly planet. We pray, God, that you would heal those who are brokenhearted over a loss and those who mourn the passing of a loved one. We pray today for Vicki and Steve Creason in the passing of Vicki's mother. Healing God, heal the broken places in lives who are experiencing divorce and homelessness and other hard things. We pray, God, for those making difficult decisions that affect so many individuals and families. May they humbly seek your help and, and have your help with those tasks. Holy and eternal God, your love speaks to us in a thousand ways. You are the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and though the world is causing us to constantly do new things, though the world around us is hurting and is fighting battles unseen, go before us, Lord, and give us clarity and direction. And for our church family and all those we love, may they see you in fresh ways, working all things together for the good. May you touch hearts in such a beautiful way that we are compelled to share your love with others freely. We ask these things in the name of your Son and our Savior who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who've trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. day in this neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood, a neighborly day for a beauty. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? 
mine. I have always wanted to have a neighbor just like you. I've always wanted to live in a neighborhood with you. So let's make the most of this beautiful day. Since we're together, we might as well say, would you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? Won't you please? Won't you please? Please won't you be my neighbor? Hi neighbor. Glad we're together today. Hello, church family. It's such a joy to be bringing a message to you today. I'm Ginger Pudens, one of the associate pastors here at Liberty United Methodist Church, and I just want to extend a, a welcome to those that we haven't seen in a long time in person-to-person -person worship, and um, if you're a guest with us today, we're just so glad that you're here with us. Today, we're finishing up our sermon series, The Good Neighbor. It's been a wonderful series where we've explored through the Holy Scriptures just what it is to be a good neighbor. The message I'm bringing today is all about love, which happens to be one of my favorite preaching topics. I have many favorites in this life. I bet you do too. I have a favorite sweater. I have a favorite candy, Reese's white chocolate, in case anybody needs to know that. I have a favorite hymn and a favorite scripture passage. I have four sons and I have a favorite kid. No, we're not supposed to have favorite children, but Every year on their birthdays, each of them, I tell them they're my favorite for just that 24-hour span of time. Luckily, none of them share the same birth date. That would be super awkward. I'll say more about favorites and favoritism later. But through the Holy Scriptures and alongside the wonderful teacher, Fred Rogers of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, we've been inspired and reminded through this sermon series that we're called to a deeper level of care and compassion for one another. We're called to um, extend grace as grace has been extended to us. We're called to treat one another civilly and respectfully and to advocate for the needs of all people. I have such fond memories of watching Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, learning new things all the time and taking those virtual field trips to factories and, and wherever and just slipping away into that neighborhood of make-believe and, and finding King Friday and Daniel the Tiger and Exial and so many other characters who really helped us learn about our feelings and how to tackle difficult situations. One of the most important lessons that Mr. Rogers taught us over and over was that each of us kids, us kids, each and every one of us are special. Each of us is a person of sacred worth. And one of Mr. Rogers' goals was to help us receive that truth. Mr. Rogers was an ordained Presbyterian minister, rarely mentioning his faith on air, but leading us by example over and over again how to care better for ourselves and our world. Our scripture passage today comes from the book of James, the second chapter, verses 8 through 10, and I invite you to follow along in your own Bible or if you're catching us on Sunday morning, there's a Bible app tab above. This letter written by James, the brother of Jesus, was written to first century Jewish Christians who were scattered through the Roman Empire. And the book of James really challenges us to live out our faith in everyday interactions with others. Like Mr. Rogers, James helps you and I better understand what love looks like, the kind of love that God desires for us to show one another. In the book of James, we're called not only to ascertain the wisdom of faith for faith's sake, but to truly live it out, to make our faith what we do for the sake of building the kingdom of God in the here and now. James speaks of a faith that should be bearing fruit as we mature as disciples. And so my hope today is that you will fully enter into this conversation about love. <clears throat> I'm reading now in verse 8. If you really keep the royal law found in scripture, love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing right. But if you show favoritism, you sin and are convicted by the law as lawbreakers. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking it all. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You've heard that text before love your neighbor as yourself. That's not new in James' letter. 
Love your neighbor as yourself is literally threaded throughout the Bible. In fact, if we were to walk it back from James, the Apostle Paul mentions love your neighbor as yourself a few times in his writing. Three of the gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, mention love your neighbor as yourself more than once. And though not specifically, specifically the same words, the prophet Isaiah and others encourage us to break the strongholds of oppression and to spend ourselves on behalf of others. And in doing so, Isaiah explains, we will be restorers of the streets with dwellings. I love that. Our neighborhoods and our neighbors will thrive as we love neighbors as ourselves. For James, though, loving our neighbor needs to be more finely tuned, if you will. This letter refers his readers many times to the law of love, the Levitical mandates we find in the 19th chapter of Leviticus. We find God saying, be holy as I am holy, and then lays out for us what that looks like if we're to be obedient to the law, loving God and loving our neighbor. And though it's law, it's very much a relational book. For me, it reads, there are many ways to say I love you. Here are a few I require. And we learn that we are to respect our parents, observe Sabbaths. We're not to turn to idols. We're to sacrifice fellowship offerings with a right heart. When harvesting fields and vineyards, we're to leave some for the poor and the foreigners to glean. We are not to steal, lie, or deceive one another. We're not to show partiality to the poor or favoritism to the great, but to judge our neighbor fairly. We are not to slander, endanger, or insult our neighbor. We are not to seek revenge or bear a grudge against anyone, but to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. How we care for and relate to one another matters so greatly to our Lord. One of the things I love about Mr. Rogers is how he reflects on moments from his past, and that informs how he relates to and helps others. You may surely have a time when you felt loved, and likewise, you know when you have felt rejected or invisible, treated as less than, when you've been made to feel unworthy of love. Mr. Rogers, in an interview, speaks of how uh, we can work through these feelings in our own lives and still build the kingdom. Please watch this clip. When Fred was in his early 20s, after college, he got his first TV job in New York City. I went to NBC, and they hired me, well, first as a gopher. You know, everybody was either uh, a person who gave tours, or you were assigned to a program to go for coffee or Coke or orange juice or whatever the producers and directors wanted. Well, that was a good experience for me because there were those who, who treated me well and there were those who treated me like, how can I say that? There were those who treated me like a servant. And when I would bring something to them that they liked, they never acknowledged it. And if I would bring something to them with, without the cream that was supposed to be in it, then I was told. And I remember that as a as a very fine experience in my life because I know how I felt when, when somebody treated me with disdain because of the job that I had. I was, I was no less a person than I ever was, but being in that position, there were those people who felt that they could treat me as somebody less. Faith in God and love for God cannot be separated from the manner in which we see, treat, and love one another. You and I can learn from those places of pain or the pain of others how to treat people fairly, 
but to treat people as people, not as a means to an end. There are many ways to say I love you. We hear that echo in Mr. Rogers' own voice. Similarly, the Apostle Paul tells us what love is and isn't, what love does and doesn't. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It's not proud. Love never dishonors others. It is not self-seeking. It is not angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. It, del it does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. We become accustomed to hearing this sacred text at weddings this time of year, typically, and thinking maybe that this applies only to love between spouses, but this kind of love is for all relationships in all places, in homes, in the marketplace, in our workplace, everywhere. Love always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Paul goes on later to say, of course, of course, faith, hope, and love remain, but the greatest of these is love. The idea of authentic love is vital to our world. Our global health rides on this simple concept. And I think the author of our text today is saying, there are many ways to say I love you, but favoritism, discrimination, is not one of them. Discrimination is incompatible with love. Love does not discriminate. This is different than having a favorite song or a favorite sweater. Having a favorite something is quite different than having a preference or a bias or for or against someone. Again, whether based on color of someone's skin, their sexuality, their political ideals. See, there are two solid ways that we are all kin. We are all in the same boat. One, we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And two, we are all loved with an everlasting love. To think more highly than we ought of ourselves is to miss the mark and prevents us from loving authentically. To think poorly of ourselves is to miss the sacred worth assigned by us or to us by our creator and likewise prevents us from loving others fully. Because in both cases, the focus becomes on us and not our creator and not our, not our neighbor. Instead, we're to be imitators of God who shows no partiality. Rather than being influenced by money or outer appearances, we remember that the Lord looks upon our hearts. The treatment and well-being of our neighbors matters greatly to our God. The life work of Fred Rogers has blessed so many in our growing up years in the United States, generations and generations. Mr. Rogers illustrated many life lessons through our years. He taught us that talking about things that were troubling was good to do rather than holding things inside us. Mr. Rogers was always an advocate for the well-being of children and all of his neighbors and you and me. When we look at the work of Mr. Rogers, we see someone who has blessed the world by showing us what it means to be a good neighbor. Episode after episode taught us how to build better relationships, to be good stewards, to show empathy to others. In addition to his own show that was filled with honesty, truth, and wholesome learning, one of Fred Rogers' main goals was to keep media experiences for young people less graphic and less fear-inducing. He often spoke to the television guild in treating them to focus on more wholesome and redeeming stories and events. And I believe, were he here today, he would invite us to focus on the good that may be happening in the midst of this tragic pandemic. Mr. Rogers had a way about him, a Holy Spirit charm, if you will. And as he said, there are many ways to say I love you. It was his actions and that gentle spirit that made it easy for us to learn those most important things. Mr. Rogers taught us that discrimination and love are incompatible and that brown feet next to white feet in a tiny wading pool on public television for youngsters and their parents to see, that is the gospel of love spoken without words. It's not wrong for us to give attention to the practical ways to say I love you in our day-to-day -day lives either. 
Years ago, an author by the name of Gary Chapman gave us multiple books on what he coined as the five love languages. This gave the world better understanding in the fact that each of us give and receive love in a myriad of different ways. Words of affirmation, um, when we give encouragement and compliments and reasons why we love and care for someone. The giving and receiving of gifts, remembering and playing someone's favorite song or sending flowers just because or because of a, a special occasion. Physical touch, gosh, we miss that today. Hugs, kisses, a squeeze of the hand, a pat on the back. Quality time, giving the gift of your presence, truly being present to one another, putting down the phone, getting away together, and just spending good time together. And acts of service, doing chores together or projects together or making a meal for someone. When you find yourself looking for a way to bless someone during a pandemic quarantine, we find new ways. We've done parades for people's birthdays and going aways, Zoom parties, and good old driveway chats in the evening. But this pandemic we call COVID-19, while it has changed many things, it has not changed the fact that discrimination is still prevalent. And so we are not doing this love your neighbor correctly. It also has not changed the fact that even with the highly contagious virus in the air, Fighting together the evil existence of discrimination is an act of love. A pandemic as vicious as COVID cannot squelch the desires of many to stand with our brothers and sisters of color to entreat justice. And for those of us who have lived a privileged life, seeking to educate ourselves and working to lead systemic change is one of the ways to say, I love you, and it's long overdue. When we view others, all others, as people, rather than a means to an end, or as a servant, as Mr. Rogers discussed in the video clip, when we see people as people, complete with their own hopes and dreams and needs, then we're able to love them better, like we would love ourselves. When we recognize that others have needs and wants that are no less important than our own, it should be a natural response to treat others with love and respect. When we are humble and gentle in spirit and not shoving our way to the front of every situation, then others can receive love through their interactions with us. When I go to a restaurant, the waiter is not my servant. The waiter is a helper, helping me have a good dining experience. I have a choice to make to see that waiter as a person or simply as a means to a good meal for myself. I believe that the author of our text is implicitly suggesting that I must treat the waiter as well as I would treat the person across from me at the dinner table. In fact, with the love I've been given through Christ, I am able to treat that waiter in a manner that will enable them to receive love that, that may very well transfer to someone else's good dining experience or even better, when that waiter goes home tired after working hard, that they're not emotionally depleted because they were blessed and built up rather than torn down, that they may experience love in some small way in our brief interaction that enables them to feel appreciated and valued, that is the more excellent way. Remember, in the kingdom of God, small things measure big. And I'm not simply talking about not being high maintenance or that you should leave a good tip but you should leave a good tip but i'm also talking about seeing your waiter as a person get to know their name look into their eyes when you when you interact with them and if you're an introvert maybe just writing thank you for your kindness on the back of the check and if you cannot find an authentic way to interact with said waiter simply ask god's blessing on them as you leave we long for connection more than ever right now, for connection and to, to know that we are seen, essential and non-essential employees, family and strangers, young and old, regardless of our ethnicity, sexuality, political persuasion, or religious preferences, we are created for and from love. We need one another. We are truly important to one another. Here's how Mr. Rogers says it so sweetly. 
No, I think everybody longs to be loved and longs to know that he or she is lovable. And consequently, the greatest thing that we can do is to help somebody know that they're loved and capable of loving. You've made this day a special day, you see, by just your being you. And if a person can receive that, of course it's an enhancement to them. But think of what an enhancement it is to the, to the giver. There are many ways to say, I love you. And this congregation is filled with hundreds of living and breathing I love yous. I get the joy of witnessing so many encounters with Jesus at LUMC all the time. Every good Methodist knows that one way to say I love you is to take a casserole to someone recovering from a surgery. Through our meal ministry, it's not been working uh, through quarantine, but lots of you are taking food and loving people in that way. There is this person who sees a person struggle via the prayer chain and prays for them and then finds a very concrete way to meet a need for them. That is love. There are people who provide funds to help others, pick up phones and call, send cards to those grieving or healing, and there are people who bring school supplies and diapers and food to the little pantry, many ways to say, I love you. Mr. Rogers recognized the space between the television set and the viewer as holy ground. Perhaps we too can view the space between as holy. In this way, we might feel much closer and connected uh, with our neighbors and our world, even at six feet apart, if we practice holy habit of presence truly being present to one another. Just one more say, way to say, I love you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. There are many ways to say I love you. There are many ways to say I care about you. Many ways, many ways, many ways to say I love you. There are many ways to say I love you just by being there when things are sad and scary just by being there being there being there to say Eating, cleaning, drawing, playing, being, understanding, love you. As we move into our time of offering, we highlight specific ministries that your offering supports. Like on Monday, the Community Blood Center came to Liberty United Methodist Church for our bi-monthly month blood drive. 30 generous people gave blood and saved hundreds of lives. There's an urgent need for blood donations, so be sure to sign up for our next blood drive on September 14th. Thank you so much for all who gave blood and who have given in the past. Ministries like this would not be possible without your support. If you joined us on Sunday morning, there is a Give tab above that you can click, or, you can, or if you joined us at another time, you can go to our website and click on the Give tab. Will you pray with me? God, we lift up our offering today and ask that you bless these gifts that these people have given us to support our ministries. Bless the people that give them and bless these gifts today. In your name we pray, amen. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, 
I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, love leaves and fear far behind, never boastful, proud, or rude. Love rejoices with the truth. So to anger stores no wrongs. Love will never seek its own. Love does not delight in sin, it bears all things, believes all things, love hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never fails. We are so glad you joined us this morning in worship. Please remember to click on the Connect tab above to sign in if you have not already done so. Before Pastor Ginger sends us forth, I have a couple of announcements I want to share. So for the month of July, Liberty United Methodist Church has been partnering with Liberty Public Schools for a back to school drive. You have until July 29th, which is this Wednesday, to drop off your donations in the bin located in the main entrance doors. Please visit lumc.org 
slash school supplies to sign up to see what supplies are needed. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Thank you so much for your donations. On the first Saturday of every month, Liberty United Methodist Church provides meals for Kansas City, Kansas Food Kitchen. Now more than ever, people need food assistance. Roughly 700 people are fed through our first Saturday meals. If you're interested in assisting financially or through volunteering, please contact Rick Walzak. Loved ones, the greatest action of love happened on the cross. And I pray you receive the fullness of Christ's love afresh today. There are many ways to say I love you. Find a way to be one of them. And may the peace of God and the grace of the Son and the power of the Holy Spirit go with you this day. Amen. It's such a good feeling to know you're alive. It's such a happy feeling you're growing inside. And when you wake up ready to say, I think I'll make a snappy new day. It's such a good feeling, a very good feeling, the feeling you know you're alive. It's such a good feeling to know you're in tune. It's such a happy feeling to find you're in bloom. And when you wake up ready to say, I think I'll make a snappy new day. It's such a good feeling, a very good feeling, the feeling you know that we're friends. It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood, a neighborly day for a beauty. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? I have always wanted to have a neighbor just like you. I've always wanted to live in a neighborhood with you. So let's make the most of this beautiful day. Since we're together, we might as well say, would you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? Won't you please? Won't you please? Please won't you be my neighbor?